Even our universities only started offering social workers, uh, social work courses quite recently. Mm. How long will it take for us to be at a level where mm. we start seeing the social work as a profession or as a field mm. as important as medicine, as important as, uh, uh, as lawyers? Yeah, well, I think if it comes down to the passion of um, local practitioners like Hassan, I don't think it'll take very long. Uh, the reason why I'm here in Sierra Leone is because I've been so inspired by Hassan, social worker Sierra Leone, about the real passion uh, for social work in this country. Um, and that's the reason why I've travelled here. And I think there are real themes that we can uh, work um, together with. And really, I've found common ground in terms of uh, the fact that we really value relationship-based practice and person-centred practice. I think what's really exciting about being part of a global profession like social work is, yes, every country is on their own journey, mm -hmm. um, but um, that's what I think makes it really interesting. We can all learn from each other. And um, yes, there are certain things that are positive about social work practice in the UK, but there are things that are negative about social work practice in the UK as well. I think it's become very bureau bureaucratic. Sometimes we lose sight of the person and the relationship amongst the... Uh, tick boxing, uh, uh, form completing and all those types of things. So um, let's see. I don't have the answer for how long that will take. But as I said, every country is on their own journey. And we're all here to support each other globally as a, as a united profession. Okay, Hassan, a lot of what you do, you know, lies on the foundation of human relationships, speaking to people in times of distress. You know, what can you say we, 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 that needs to be done in those areas? Human relationship, building better, you know, service providers, because, you know, in Sierra Leone, we have this, this habit of just coming in when things are too late. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That is why, you know, the, the need to actually um, empower social workers is key because we are locals, we're, you know, we are citizens, obviously. It's best when we are more empowered because NGOs, obviously, at one point in time, they will leave. You know, we have had series of many NGOs have come and then after whatever they have achieved, you know, mm -hmm. and then they wrap up. So on that note, we have been very much engaging when it comes to how much we want our profession to be uh, to be integral when it comes to service delivering around welfare issues, and the conversation is still ongoing. Um, the Ministry of Social Welfare is also making reasonable effort. So um, there's a current development at the moment in terms of having a social work bill that harmonises the social work curriculum, because all of that is has to be boiled down around the the knowledge, and at, at the same times the practice settings. Mm -hmm. So if we don't have the practice settings, even if we have the knowledge, you know, like we, we have thousands of people graduating every year. They don't, they, they, there's no opportunity for them to practice. What do you expect? And many of them are now shifting to other areas so that they can begin engage mm -hmm. and get employed. So we are losing resources. We are losing talent, you know, and how, how the time we should, we should have used to utilize these young people, you know, as a country, we are not taking advantage of short. So at the end of the day, we are now relying on every time we have crisis, we have to expect outsiders to come and teach us how to help our own people. Instead of you know, taking advantage of already existing structures and see how best countries like Nigeria, they try to create some kind of exchange programs. Okay. You know, um, following colleges in Nigeria that most of the times, every year you have students coming from UK you know, into their own college, and at the same time having students from Nigeria going to UK and have extend programs, and they see the practice in the UK, see the, the, those in the UK see the practice in the Nigeria, and they, 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 they gain experience, and, and, and at, the, at the end of the day, what the result the country will get, they will have an acute and a qualified social workers. Mm -hmm. Whereas for us, we don't have these opportunities. You know, we, we only wait for NGOs to respond and we are behind the NGOs. So basically, this is the thing that we really much want the government to actually invest on social, invest the effort they are making to send medical doctors, you know, to other countries to study. Similarly, short efforts can also be be shared to social workers to have the opportunity to go to, to go to countries and study and have the knowledge because knowledge informs practice. If the knowledge is not there, then we, we will not be able to actually provide you know the effective or the, the relevant you know practice that is required. So this is where we, we we appreciate the media. They are very much supportive in terms of having the word out when it comes to social work. But in all of these actions needs to be taken. 
which has to come from government. We are trying our best. We as a group, as a, as a local organization, we're very much organized and formidable, but we cannot go beyond you know, our strength. Our strength is being together. We need the government to actually now see our best. They can support us. So basically, that is how I see so that as social workers, we're expected to enhance the well-being of people. Enhancing the well-being of people is very broad. We're dealing with poverty. We're dealing with domestic violence. abuses, violence. You know, we're dealing with you know unemployment. We're dealing with mental health on its own. You know, so mm -hmm. all of that falls on the social workers. If we don't have the requisite skills and knowledge, but also again the platform to practice, you know, it will very it will become more, you know, like unhealthy to the country because you know, look at how the country is. is. Five out of ten young people you see. You may, you may assume that one of them is involved into taking Tamadol or whatsoever, if you move in the street of Freetown. And some of them, it's either as a coping mechanism as a result of unemployment or dealing with poverty or dealing with, you know, not all of them are actually doing it as a result of intentional, you know, going to drug abuse. So how can we help those people who are taking this as a coping mechanism to escape their social problem? There's a way social workers have their hands out to them. But if we're not actually put part of the, 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 the development framework of how do we improve the, capital, the human capital development at this government, that is the key of this government, putting the human capital at the center, and social workers are not really tapping into their skills and talent, then the question is, what results do we want to see in terms of productivity, in terms of healthy nation, in terms of you know, motivated young people who really want to progress, you know, as other countries. Mm -hmm. So all of that is when you put position social workers, because the uniqueness of social workers, we don't only focus in on one thing. Like for instance, if I'm a medical doctor, you 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 visit me, I only treat you for malaria. You know, no social workers. We look at the cause. We also look at how what actually caused this problem. 